Hi, I'm Drif. I'm going to show you today how to create a new project mail in Aconex. We'll go through a couple of ways of selecting recipients from the project directory and complete the required fields in the mail, including setting a time frame for the response before we send it. I'll also show you the shortcuts for creating mail types that you use frequently. Let's get started. Click Mail on the Module menu and under Create New, click Blank Mail. First up, we need to choose the type of mail that we want to send. Mail types can be configured with auto text, which is automatically added to the mail. This is very useful for commonly used forms or clauses in your organization. Let's choose Request for Information. And you can see some auto text has been added to give us a head start. See how some fields are marked with an asterisk and highlighting? These fields are mandatory, and we have to complete them in order to be able to send the mail. Now we need to choose the mail recipients. We must choose at least one to recipient or CC recipient, and we can of course choose more. We can just type some or all of the name in the field and press enter. Aconex searches the project directory for names or mailing groups that match. If a number of matching names are found, you need to choose the recipient you want from the list. You can also choose recipients or a mail group from the address book by clicking to or CC. This lets you find recipients using their organization name, given name, and family name. Select the recipient you want and add them to the project mail. Not all types of mail need a response, but we'd like a response to our RFI, so we'll choose respond by and set the date we want an answer by. For example, your project instruction could have agreed time frames for RFI replies. Any recipients in the to field will need to respond by this date, but recipients in the CC field aren't expected to reply. Now type a meaningful subject for the mail. This helps you and others know what it's about and to find it later on. Now we need to add the mail attributes. Attributes are tags used with mail and documents that provide extra search criteria to help you track things down later. You can check the attribute list in your project instruction. These vary from project to project. Mail details, if you have them, are similar. Details aren't used on every project, but they make it easy to enter, find, and report on the information that's contained in the mail. So if they're there, fill them in. You can also add attachments to your mail. Documents from your register, a project mail, files from your computer or network. So if you've had a response from another project member that's relevant to your mail, you can search for it and attach that mail instead of cutting and pasting the information. That way, your recipient gets the full context. There's our attached mails. Then we complete the body text. You can also copy and paste text from other sources like Word into mail. At any time when you're creating your mail, you can save it to draft. Aconex automatically saves your mail to draft every five minutes and you'll get a similar notification each time. We click send and off it goes. Mail's displayed confirming that it's been sent to all recipients. Remember, all project mail sent and received in Aconex has fast and secure delivery. So now you know how to create any type of mail, let me show you a shortcut for creating mail types that you use frequently. You see this list of mail types under Create Mail? These are the mail types that you've created most often in the previous 30 days. It's your personal set of mail shortcuts. One click and you're off to a flying start. I hope you're now confident with creating and sending a new mail. You'll be able to search for recipients by name from within the new mail form or go to the address book for a wider search, set a response time frame and complete the mail details. You'll also be sure that it was delivered. Be sure to take advantage of your personal mail type shortcuts. Bye for now. We're excited to introduce some changes to mail. All of these changes are designed to help you stay on top of your mail processes, to see what needs your attention at a glance, and to get to the important information quicker. The first change gives project admins the ability to specify which mail types will automatically update a mail thread status to responded if a response is requested. Secondly, users with appropriate permissions can now mark mail in a thread as their response after the fact to update its status. And finally, we've added new mail search columns that highlight the date a response was given and which mail was marked as the response. 
So let's run through these now, starting with the new mail status improvements. Previously, replying to a mail with any mail type would automatically set a mail thread status to responded. This is great for simple mail processes, but not so great for more complex communications. For example, we can see here an unread request for information. Let's click through and have a look. We can see the sender has set a response by date here, which brings our mail status feature into play. As you can see, the mail status is outstanding. In a simple process, we'd hit reply. Set the mail type to response to RFI and send through the information like so. By default, using this mail type has set the mail status to responded, which is great in this example. But sometimes we need to clarify a question before responding to it. Instead of an RFI response, let's send a clarification, asking for a bit more information before we answer the request. As we can see, again, the mail status gets set to responded. That's not ideal in this situation as the thread has yet to reach a resolution, so it should remain outstanding. If you're a project admin, you can now fix this issue with new mail type configuration options. So let's do that now. Let's go to the setup menu and under project, select project settings. Click mail on the left here and select mail types. Let's find our mail type and select edit rules on the right. So here we've set up the RFI mail type with some custom reply with rules which limit the mail types that can be used to respond to an RFI. But now we can also choose whether that mail type updates the mail status by clicking here. We can move the mail types to the yes or no column using the arrows like so. Let's set the clarification type so it doesn't update the status. Click OK, then save. Now we can send a clarification and the status remains as outstanding. The status will only change to responded once a response to RFI mail is sent. But what if a response was already provided but the status remains as outstanding? Well, now if we have permission, any mail in the thread sent by our organization can be marked as our final response after the fact. Let's look at this thread as an example. After a long chain of mail, a follow-up message asks if a resolution was ever met. It seems the answer got a bit buried. To update the status, we can find the message that answers the query, select it, and under the Actions drop-down select Make This Your Response. Easy. Just note, a project or org admin will need to grant their users permission to use this feature. If you're an admin, you do this from the Setup menu. Under Configuration, go to Configure User Role Settings, scroll down to Mail, and find Make Sent Mail Your Response and grant permission to the required user roles. Lastly, to support this new functionality, we've introduced two new columns in Mail Search to speed up your processes and locate responses. So, let's double click Mail to go to our inbox, then click Add or Remove Columns. Let's find the new columns, move them to Selected and click OK. From here, we can see the date a mail was set to responded and click through to view the final response. From the mail thread, we can also click the status of the initiating mail to locate the final response. This is especially helpful when navigating large mail threads. So there you have it. Thanks for using Aconex. We're excited to introduce some changes to Mail. All of these changes are designed to help you stay on top of your mail processes, to see what needs your attention at a glance, and to get to the important information quicker. The first change gives project admins the ability to specify which mail types will automatically update a mail thread status to responded if a response is requested. Secondly, users with appropriate permissions can now mark mail in a thread as their response after the fact to update its status. And finally, we've added new mail search columns that highlight the data response was given and which mail was marked as the response. 
So let's run through these now, starting with the new mail status improvements. Previously, replying to a mail with any mail type would automatically set a mail thread status to responded. This is great for simple mail processes, but not so great for more complex communications. For example, we can see here an unread request for information. Let's click through and have a look. We can see the sender has set a response by date here, which brings our mail status feature into play. As you can see, the mail status is outstanding. In a simple process, we'd hit reply. Set the mail type to response to RFI and send through the information like so. By default, using this mail type has set the mail status to responded, which is great in this example. But sometimes we need to clarify a question before responding to it. Instead of an RFI response, let's send a clarification, asking for a bit more information before we answer the request. As we can see, again, the mail status gets set to responded. That's not ideal in this situation as the thread has yet to reach a resolution, so it should remain outstanding. If you're a project admin, you can now fix this issue with new mail type configuration options. So let's do that now. Let's go to the setup menu and under project, select project settings. Click mail on the left here and select mail types. Let's find our mail type and select edit rules on the right. So here we've set up the RFI mail type with some custom reply with rules which limit the mail types that can be used to respond to an RFI. But now we can also choose whether that mail type updates the mail status by clicking here. We can move the mail types to the yes or no column using the arrows like so. Let's set the clarification type so it doesn't update the status. Click OK, then save. Now we can send a clarification and the status remains as outstanding. The status will only change to responded once a response to RFI mail is sent. But what if a response was already provided, but the status remains as outstanding? Well, now, if we have permission, any mail in the thread sent by our organization can be marked as our final response after the fact. Let's look at this thread as an example. After a long chain of mail, a follow-up message asks if a resolution was ever met. It seems the answer got a bit buried. To update the status, we can find the message that answers the query, select it, and under the Actions drop-down, select Make this your response. Easy. Just note, a project or org admin will need to grant their users permission to use this feature. If you're an admin, you do this from the Setup menu. Under Configuration, go to Configure User All Settings, scroll down to Mail, and find Make Sent Mail Your Response and grant permission to the required user roles. Lastly, to support this new functionality, we've introduced two new columns in Mail Search to speed up your processes and locate responses. So, let's double click Mail to go to our inbox, then click Add or Remove Columns. Let's find the new columns, move them to Selected and click OK. From here, we can see the date a mail was set to responded and click through to view the final response. From the mail thread, we can also click the status of the initiating mail to locate the final response. This is especially helpful when navigating large mail threads. So there you have it. Thanks for using Aconex. Hi, I'm Tref. I'm going to show you today how to create personal auto text for mail in Aconex. I'll show you how to create an auto text block and assign it to one or more mail types, and then how to set the auto text default for a mail type so that text appears automatically when you create a mail of that type. So let's have a look. Click Setup on the module menu and under Configuration, click Preferences. Here you can set all your Aconex user preferences. If you have the appropriate security settings, you can also access your project or organization preferences and add auto text for use by your project members or everyone in your organization. 
For now, we'll just create a personal auto text. Notice that these ones at the top are project specific, but all the others apply across all projects. Let's scroll down now to the mail section to configure mail auto text and click edit. You can create a new HTML auto text or just a plain text one. Let's go with HTML. We need to give our auto text a name to identify it. You can type the new auto text in the auto text field and apply formatting to it, or you can copy and paste some fully formatted text from another program like Microsoft Word or Excel. Now we need to set which mail types this auto text can be used with. We only want this auto text we've created to be used with the request for information mail type, but we could choose more than one mail type, and then click save. This auto text is now available to be selected from the auto text list when you're creating a request for information mail. Now if you want this auto text to be added automatically each time you create a new request for information mail, we need to set it as the default auto text for the mail type. So we go up here and then select mail types and click edit. We scroll down the list of available mail types to request for information and click auto text. There's our new auto text on the right, but we need to set it as the default for this mail type. You can see that currently there is no default, so we need to select our new auto text to make it the default. Click OK to save. And now when we create a new request for information mail, the auto text is added automatically. Now you know how to create personal mail auto text for one or more mail types. You can also set the default auto text for a mail type so text appears automatically when you create a mail.